Have you been wondering which apps you should use for your smartphone to be more productive in the real estate business? Yeah, today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 165. As always, our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Good morning, John O'Brien. What's on the shed? Well, definitely product apps, not just productivity apps. I think I really recently went through and looked at all the apps I had on my phone. And as part of some of the training we've been working on, I mm-hmm. did my research again and deleted and and added and realized there's a bunch of apps that I have abandoned, like I think all of us. Uh, So I I put together something on what are the apps, broke them into categories. We're gonna talk about scheduling. We're gonna talk about day-to-day apps that you need out in the field as a real estate agent and a few other things that will hopefully point you in the right direction of how you can really be a mobile agent. You have to be able to work in the field and you might as well have everything right here on your phone, not have to get to your desktop. And you can in this business. You've been able to do this for years. So I think it's time to revisit that. I bet everybody could do a refresh on the apps on their phone and maybe start using them more. And and the bottom line is it's about being more productive and saving time. That's what I want to be able to talk about. We love the saving time uh, thing because we could all use a little of that back. But it does re- require building some habits, as always. So we'll we'll jump into those in a yeah, second. Yeah, building some habits. Funny how it always takes a little time to save a little time. It takes right? a little time to save a little time, but it's worth the effort. All and right, let's jump in. Let's do it. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Tune in, and you can watch us on YouTube. All right, so we have a few to share, of course, as we always do. If you're watching over on our YouTube channel, uh, you can follow along with us. It helps me stay on track of what I'm going to talk to you about. And if you're just a great listener to our podcast, then just jump on over to the show notes, wbnlpodcast.com, show number 165. 165, and you can get a grab all these. Okay, so first up, scheduling. This is the, probably the most important thing, and it's the thing I use every single day, and it's my calendar. And I use Gmail, so I'm using, I'm actually using the calendar. I chose to use the calendar that came in the iPhone. However, there is a Gmail app that you can use, um, just whatever your preference is, if you're using Outlook. But the whole point is your calendar has to be on your phone, uh, 100%. The other thing around scheduling, and I have it on mine, is Zoom, but I can also do Google Meet because we're big Google users, you got to be able to get on a Zoom via your tablet or your phone if you had to. So get the Zoom app if you don't already have it on your phone. Bet it is. Now, next level for scheduling. And I have to tell you, Matt, I am still hesitant to committing to this part. This is like giving up control of your calendar to an app. And it's using something like Calendly. Uh, There are other booking appointment apps out there. A lot of small business owners use this, especially folks that need to book appointments consistently. I mean, obviously, like a I go to my hairdresser or, you know, they're using an app to be able to schedule appointments. Now, I do think there's a use for this and it's high level. It just requires you to keep, to connect your calendar to the app, to the Calendly app, and they'll talk to each other. But what you're doing is stating these times are open for people to book appointments with me. And that's where I feel sometimes I'm like, hey, I don't know if I want to do that. Now, where it's going to save time is the back and forth of, are you available this day? No. And then you're back and forth in a day or two trying to schedule an appointment with somebody. So I, and I, the other reason I like it a lot for total customer experience is I'm trying to convince myself why to do this, right? <laughs> yeah. Is you give the client the opportunity to pick the time. Now you are in control because you're saying I'm available here, 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 and here. And you have to have enough openings on your calendar. So, you know, I think it's great for coaching and other things, but I do see a lot of agents going to this, like book an appointment with me, 
So you'll have to decide. That's next level scheduling. And, and the interface is actually very easy because I've set that up before and there's not a lot not to it. But you're right. It's about the dedication of figuring out your schedule every week and what you're going to have open. Now, this would mean you're totally in control of your schedule, meaning that you have certain appointment times always available, standing appointment times. You, you could have, always have the flexibility. And when you're working with a client one on one, you're not going to probably have them use the, the time to book. But it's more of if you're if you're doing a lot of interviews with people or, right. you know, you're uh, if you're a recruiter, that would be a good use for it. So you decide if you want to go to that level. But at the very minimum have the calendar app on your phone, okay, and the Zoom app. So let's talk about real estate day-to-day, -day, okay, the things that I went down my, into my, I actually have a folder on my iPhone because I have so many apps on my phone that just says yeah, real yeah. estate, right? Yeah. And so it's what's in my real estate folder, and what's in my real estate folder is my CRM app, which is currently KB Core. So that is awesome because that's probably the most important app for your daily operations is your CRM. So in the field, you can make your calls, you can look someone up, you can track anything, you know, that your CRM uh, allows you to in the, in the app version. Usually the desktop version is more robust, but everything that you need to do to access your transactions and things like that are probably going to be in your CRM app. The next one I use most often beyond the CRM would be the MLS app. This is great because if you're out in the field, you don't you don't need to go log into the MLS like you are on a desktop. All MLSs have an app version, a mobile version, and there's even one that you can. Uh, the there's an MLS version, and there's usually one that's the second version of this app, is the the one that you would share with your clients so they can be searching for homes. But I'm talking about you as a real estate agent being able to pull up the MLS on your phone in an easier fashion, an easier way to search, and that's your MLS app. Um, Waze, the Waze app, I, I, I just used the Jeep, the, the, uh, the map one, but if I was doing some more bigger traveling kind of scenarios or driving, I would probably use Waze. Do you use Waze? No, I don't use any GPS. That's right. I have driven around with Matt, Matt, and he does like to just, you know, know where he's going or he's yep. always I look where I'm going before I go. And once I've been there once, I never have to look at the map again. Now, listen to me, everyone. That's a real estate agent. Do not follow Matt's advice. Okay. And <laughs> the, you, know, I, you know what? I would even say don't follow my advice, but it works for me. It works and for me because he's a that. wanderer. That's why we're called wandering, but not lost. That's right. Uh, and it is fun when you're wandering. I say do that when you're wandering, but when you are trying trying to go take clients around to homes, don't rely on, rely on your GPS. And if you have a vehicle that doesn't have GPS, then you can use something like Waze uh, to help you with traffic. So again, in big metro places where you're on uh, cities, you know, where traffic could be an issue, then you may want to consider that. But I just use the the map app in my phone um, to help me get to where I need to go. And I, I recently was helping a friend who moved to Florida uh, the northeast part of Florida, up around Amelia Island, and the realtor was not was old school, you know. And I love it for her. This is the way I used to do it before we had GPS. She just had her MLS printouts, and she was she knows her area, but she did get turned around. And and I was like, wow, man, you know, just turn on the app. And so it's funny. My friend turned on the Waze app and helped her navigate from the front seat. Uh, you know, got turned around because she thought she knew the area. So just you know, you want to be professional. So I mentioned the home search app to share. Uh, another awesome one from National Association of Realtors, just when it comes to being able to pull up data or a quick report for a client, is the RPR mobile app. You know what's really cool about RPR is no matter where you are in the country, you can pull up data on other parts of the country. It's really neat because I've done that before I became a Florida realtor. Being able just to pull, it's not as deep as being an MLS agent uh, or having access to the MLS, but it does have demographics and information and, and sales and so forth. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the other app I've used a lot uh, in showing homes is showing time, right? So showing time allows you to uh, schedule appointments or some agents want you to use showing time. Uh, there's other things that it allows you to do as the listing agent who's going into the property and out your lockbox will do that to your electronic lockbox, but showing time is pretty cool. I also think you need some type of mortgage calculator. Now, the one I'm using in Vegas is with our partner, Fidelity. We like to work with uh, Fidelity National Title, and they have their Fidelity One app, which is cool because it has everything from mortgage calculators to be able to calculate closing costs, and you can do that on the fly. Sit down with someone and be able to help them calculate a mortgage payment or 
figure out a buyer or seller's cost for closing, which is very cool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, another thing I think you might need and you might want to consider is a scanner app, meaning the ability to scan a receipt to be super organized for your taxes or something that you want to do. Now, I, ha I used to feature in Evernote. Evernote. Uh, I have the upgraded Evernote. I like Evernote and Dropbox. I've become. I've come back to Dropbox because Dropbox, I think, got a little stale and realized they were getting beat out on some features. Yeah. And now they have done some really cool things in Dropbox um, as a storage thing. But Evernote has the ability that you can scan something and and that you might need later. Best example is a receipt. So go back to that for just a second. When you're doing that, what scanning that does? What is it? Just is it? Or is it taking data or is it just taking a picture basically? It takes a photo of it. It takes a, you know, in a scanner. And if you're, it, the other reason that Evernote could work and you could turn a, you could also, thank you for asking that question because I was about to skip over this most important part. If you're out in the field or you're somewhere remote and you need to get a copy of a document that's already uploaded somewhere and you're physically needing, you know, had something signed and you needed to scan it, you could use a scanner app for that. So you take a picture of it, it can convert it to a PDF. Then you yeah, can email. There you go. Okay. So, I was going to say because you could just take a picture of a receipt. Right? Yeah, yeah, you could take yeah. a picture. But the idea of the the app and there are scanner apps. Just go to your store, your app store, and look for that. I use, like I said, it's built into my Evernote. But there are like scanner apps that will now store it for you and then maybe even link over to your Dropbox or your yes, Evernote. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so that way you're not like, oh, I got to go get it out of my my uh, phone and remember to go do something with it or share it. So, you know, you just got to have a system for that. But the Hey, there's not a person that's listening to this podcast right now that has dealt with their taxes in the last, you know, month or two or whenever it's been that hasn't been like, where did that receipt go? So it, Absolutely. And yeah. I, I have to say, I have not been doing this, scan, this scanning of receipts, but I'm to start doing this uh there are a couple cool there are, there might be some accounting apps that you decide to yeah. look at but the whole point is don't just go get an app because it sounds cool you get something because you're actually going to use it and it comes back to what we said at the top of the show here you got to build a habit <laughs> you have to have a habit that says oh because here's what i do with my receipts they go into my my purse uh you know my wallet and then i take them out i just did this yesterday i take them all out then i come and put them into an envelope that i deal with at, at tax time and uh you know frankly it'd be easier just to have them all organized and cataloged a little bit that's like the closet easier. thing of your parents you know all of the receipts in a shoe box in the closet works. i think there's a lot of people who relate to that <laughs> The last app I have on my list is if you're using video of some sort, like there's a Videolicious. Some people use Videolicious. I, we've used that in the past. Um, video is so powerful that I, I'm a I'm a fan of BombBomb. Bomb and I have the KB Core uh, version of that. And they partnered with BombBomb Bomb and KB Core partnered and they have an app that allows you inside the app, you'll be able to record videos, but just bomb bomb standalone. The app, it was so powerful when I had just bomb bomb. And I may go back to that actually out here in Florida, because what it lets you do is you could just use your phone to record video, but inside of something like bomb bomb, you have access to the platform where you can upload the video. You could get real very quickly in the field. You could have this library of videos that you have there that you could text or very cool to text or email a video yeah. on the fly to someone. Uh, so I really like that. That's obviously a paid bomb bomb cost about 500 bucks a year, but you can get the app that goes with it. The other yeah, thing and once again, the, the, uh, the uh, interface in that is really good. I, I used to work with Jenna Bryan on that one and I did a lot of some of the stuff in the back end and it's super easy on the back end. And that's yeah, what you, you want. You want something to be easy. You, and honestly, Matt, great input there because it, the back end is it's like a, a MailChimp or a constant uh -huh. contact, right? So you can exactly. have templated emails. You could pop your video in there and you could add people to your mailing list from there and send texts and emails from the desktop, from the mobile app. The other thing that's so cool about BombBomb is the, the Chrome extension that goes with your Gmail. This was my favorite part in using it. And it's actually a... A thing that I don't like about the KV Core version because there's not that app allowed. I mean, you can't do this part. You have to pay for the whole bomb bomb. And all it allows you to do is on a one-off basis, I could inside my Gmail, get that Chrome extension, click on record a video and go, hey, Matt, it's Jan. Just wanted to check in with you and let you know here's the update on where we are with um, the our deal in escrow right now. You're home, blah, 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 blah. Now I can hit it and send it. 
and it's going to, he's going to get it. it. won't go to spam because it's going to, and it's really cool because it captures the first, it kick, it creates an animated GIF uh, in the beginning. So you can do fun things like hold up a, here, I actually did this. Like, yeah, you always did that. Yeah. Is, Hi, Tammy. I actually was doing this. This is one I was doing with yeah. uh, our lender. Hi, Tammy. I wanted to be able to show her how to use it. Um, so uh, anyway, love bomb bomb. All right. So let's move on to another category, doc storage, collaboration, and sharing. A um, lot of options here. So for uh, as real estate agents, we we're, we're all generally have a paperless system. Could be transaction desk, sky slope, dot loop. Used all three of those in my career so far, but that is going to allow you to access your transaction files and documents on the fly. And there's some again. Usually the desktop version is way more robust, just like your CRM. But you can you definitely want to get the app version as well. You need some type of e-signature, so that could be inside of your paperless system, like dot loop and sky slope and transaction desk all have their own e-signature. Uh, or you could use something like DocuSign. Uh, you know, we have your own DocuSign account if you wanted it for other than just transactional type things. Uh, the next thing is Google Drive. Um, we have become huge fans of Drive. We were always, you know, more Dropbox. I still use Evernote. I have on my list Dropbox, Evernote, and Google Drive. I use them for different reasons, okay? I do have Dropbox. Uh, I have discovered something I'm loving in Dropbox, and I use it in my coaching right now to because it has something called Hello Sign, not to be confused with Hello Fresh. <laughs> uh, if you get Hello Fresh, which we do, but Hello or hashtag, Sign, I, or, or Jan, or hashtag Hello Tomorrow. Hello Tomorrow. It's not to be confused with any of those things. It's called Hello Sign. And with your Dropbox account, and I don't know if it's an upgraded Dropbox account now that I think about it, because we do pay for extra space, you get three free monthly uh, uses of HelloSign. It's all integrated into Dropbox. It's great. I use it when I have coaching clients and can upload uh, the coaching contract, prep it, sign it, and then it comes back into the Dropbox folder. Correct. So I really love that they've added that. Yeah, and that's you nice. can, you, if you do tons more business than that, and you're using Dropbox, um, you know, clearly use the, for your real estate transactions, use whatever comes with the, the software that you're using. Uh, but that's a kind of a neat extra benefit. And then they're doing some other cool collaborative things in Dropbox. Evernote or Google Keep or Microsoft OneNote, those are the competitors for those different areas, right? Meaning a, a place for you to keep notes or um, how I first started using Evernote is researching, finding something online that I want to be able to get to later to write a blog post or do a video. And then you can clip it and send it into Evernote and then not have to remember where the heck is that, you know, or you know, how many times have you had your tabs opened and you're like, dang it, you know, I shut the computer down and I forgot to save yeah. that link. And so you can put the Evernote extension into Chrome hit the little elephant head and then you can go save all your things and then get to them later. So that's a big use for Evernote or Google Keeper, just taking notes, right, in general. Uh, and then Drive, we use Drive for everything. So Drive is where we complete, man, we're in trouble if something goes wrong with Drive. We <laughs> <And> are <laughs> screwed. <laughs> Frankly, we do have things backed up because all the videos we record, I'm putting them onto a hard drive. Matt does that, but they are up in Google Drive as well. And we use it to communicate everything, to keep track of all the content. Yeah, we doing. have stuff saved in so many places regarding those videos that literally everything would have to go down in the world for us not to have those videos. That's a good point, but I do worry about that sometimes. I know. Now, I we've do. upgraded. We really, as a team, you may want to consider going to, good God, you know, one thing about these things, Google has changes its name every other day. You know, Google, uh, I get it wrong. I have to look at my notes. Is it workspace? Place. I was calling it workplace. It's workplace. It is. I have it wrong in my notes. Are you sure? Yes. Well, you, well okay. See, it's Google something. It's Google Work Workplace. See, and I called it Workspace, so I get that confused. It's Workplace. It used to be called just G Suite. Then it was, uh, oh gosh, in between G Suite and something else, it was called something before it became Workplace. But it is the upgrade. And you pay around 6 $7 per user based on- now, You know, space. now that I'm thinking about it, it is space. It used to be place, or we thought it was space. It's Google Space. You've got it right. All right. Anyway, it's just- you got upgrade. it right. 
uh, G, I can't remember what the other name used to be, but it's the upgrade. If you all, if you have a Gmail account, you have Google Drive and you have, I think, 30 gigs of space to use for everything from Google Photos to anything that you put up in the drive. Now, for us heavy content creators, we had to upgrade because we got, we use that space up pretty quick, okay, with video storage and all that. So, anyway, you need space, you need place that you can have copies of everything that you're doing in your business as well. Even though you have a copy of uh, all of your transaction in the company's transaction management system, my recommendation, highly recommend it, keep your own copies of things, okay? Keep your own copies of things uh, as a backup. That's what you should do as a good business person, okay? Anything to add to, to doc storage, collaboration, sharing? Uh, no, I just think it's one of the it, it, pick the pick what's going to be convenient and it's going to work for you. I mean, the, the, we love Google because it, it crosses beyond that, right? Everything is connected, and that's wonderful. So, all right. And the last category is project task management, even just down to simple to do lists. So again, Google Drive or Google Workspace is is kind of what we do. You can create your own you know checklist of things there. It depends on where you go. See that this is the thing, and this is the the challenge. I would say. Don't go find some other thing. I have no. learned about this and I, I'm talking about ones on this list right now that I've used and abandoned because it has to be the thing that you go to every day. Otherwise, it's just a great idea and it's an abandoned app that you're using. So we right, we use we use Google Drive for most of that. However, in our team, we have gone back uh, initially when Slack came out. I tried it and we tried to work with it like Matt and I individually working. We use our own version of that and it's just using chat. So we're yep. both on iOS, you know, uh, Apple. So our chat is just, it's great for just two-way communication and, and going all day long. However, with the big, huge team that we have now of virtual assistants and, and uh, Cosmo as a partner, I have found Slack for team collaboration and communication to be awesome because it is easily, easily divided using hashtags for projects. You can create different little channels there about projects and Plus it interacts with everything. So Slack will interact with here it is on, here's a link to it in Google drive or Dropbox, or here's the asset. Um, you know, so anyway, a great thing, if you have a team, if you are working with other agents, if you have an assistant and you want to just be able to check in all day, you leave Slack open and then you can just get updates on, on what's happening. You could use Google chat for the same thing, to be honest, okay. Apple chat, whatever you, it's not Apple chat, but you know what I mean? The iChat, iChat. Uh, all right, so we love Google Drive. We love Slack. Um, I have used Trello. Trello, think Pinterest for project management, right? It's you have boards, they have cards, you can drag and drop them and move them around. And it's a very creative space for project management and you can collaborate with people on it. That's a popular one. But I just, again, you know, it's like, you got I didn't use it. So I, you got to stick with what you work with. I recently... Uh, I've heard of Asana. I've used Asana. That's another popular project management. Honestly, right. I don't think you need a project management. When you need project management is if you're just in some big company and you're yeah, It's for multiple people, players. For yeah, sure. all these people collaborating. I really don't think you need it. You could just use Google Drive or something like Trello if you really want to get into. You're really working on, you know, the way we coach, though. You do have a lot of projects and systems that you're working on. You just need to figure out what, what's going to work for you to organize. So a new and upcoming one is called UpClick. I've seen a lot of press on this. I did yeah, check I it too. out. It is cool, but I, I, I'm I, Matt. You'd be proud of me. I'm like, oh, I should go play with that. I'm like, no, no, you're not going there. That's like going Thank to you. when Trello came out and, oh, it's cool, but I'll, you know, let's use, we're going to use Google Drive because we're there every single day, all day long. We know how to use it and we've learned how to do it. And then a real simple, popular to do app, maybe just for your checklist. Frankly, I use notes. I've kept it simple, but I like Todoist. Todoist has got great reviews. That's an app that's a standalone to do thing, to do list. And again, you have to open up the app and use it. So what I do is I use notes, notes for everything. I, I have notes. Now notes has become more robust and I use notes for my shopping list. I have yeah. one just called shopping and I change it and it's all good. Right. So Matt Emerson, that is uh, the apps to share. Did, did you have anything else? By the way, we do have a couple links to, because uh, we did talk a little bit about productivity. And if you want to get some great insight on a couple good books around being productive and, and managing your time, 
and resources. Um, I'm a fan of Getting Things Done, James Allen, and great little simple book, Eat That Frog. (laughs) Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Actually, let me just read the full title of that. So Getting Things Done, The Art of Stress-Free Productivity, by far one of my favorite books, always recommend it. And then Eat That Frog, 21 Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Get More Done, in less time by Brian Tracy. We have links to those in the show notes. Yeah, so. and actually, we'll give you another. Here's the thing. I love what you said earlier. This was my this was my takeaway from what you talked about today. Not all the stuff, good content, but you have a real estate folder on your phone, so all of your stuff is already in one place. That's brilliant, right? But here's a couple of things I would suggest as every realtor add to their uh, must do apps or must have apps in their real estate folder on their phone, and that's a couple other like a meditation app. And we're going to, we have a whole list of meditation apps you can have in there. Cause I'm going to tell you if we're having a hard transaction, just go to your real estate folder and click on the meditation yeah. app for just a second. And then you also also need to be thinking about what you're going to do in your spare time where you can rewind and energize and refresh. So, you know, put an app on there of travel or someplace that you like to do a national park app. I love, I go to it all the time. Even, you know, even if I'm not planning a trip, I go and look at pictures from national parks. So I don't have the national park app. Do, do yeah. Do? do something. I think it's just W well, just Google national park service and it'll come up or MPS. All right. Um, and then I wanted to talk to say to you, Jenna Brand, as you were talking about, you know, uh, GPS and, and ways and, and all of that, got to thinking about, and I, you know, Jan and I always talk about how, you know, when we start talking about when we first got in the business, it really is like we are the Flintstones. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, and we always talk about the Thomas guy and the Thomas book. And that was so funny. And I got to thinking. Metro Maps. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, you would have that big thing and be like, OK, we need to look at all the houses in square 745. <laughs> right. OK, but here's the thing. I thought to myself, you know, if Thomas Brothers was huge and, you know, did they how did what happened to them? Did they stay? Did they keep up? Well, no, I, I have no idea. I, don't hey, know I just while we were that anymore. while we Why were talking, I went online. They've got a beautiful website that's filled with a ton of maps, but nothing. They don't have any GP. You would think that they would have gone to GP. They would have gone. They would have evolved. It's but it doesn't look like they did. Except you know what? I think it's like a retro thing. Like it could come back in style to use a map. Well, I love maps. You know that. And honestly, I have to share with you to that point. I moved to this new area here. I'm up in Wesley Chapel, Florida, which is north of Tampa. And I have been on a mission to learn my surroundings. So what did I do? I went to the Barnes and Noble, which yep. there is one standing still. And yep. I love still going to a bookstore. I went to that area. I got a, t- a greater Tampa map and I have it. I have it with me all the time and I study it. And then when I'm traveling, I'm this is how I, I feel like as an old real estate, I mean, an old uh, pilot, I love navigating. And so I see things from a pilot's view. I'm always looking at maps because it's the way that I can navigate and get around. And I, you know, 29 years in Vegas, I know my way around, but I would still use GPS if I'm showing a home because there's so many twists and turns into neighborhoods these days. But that's what I've done. I had to go back to a good old map. But the great Mark thing about up. a map is on your phone, you get a, you can get an overall aerial yeah. shot, but not the same way. You know what I mean? You can no. really study. Like I just love, book. I really think at digital. some point, yeah, at some point in my life or my past life, I was a cartologist. You know what I mean? So that, that was my thing. I, I loved maps. So I believe that. Uh, and I agree with you. It is just, it's, it, there is something to holding that and being able to see it. And for me, it's just, you know, learning a new place is what you have to do. So that's awesome. So hopefully you, you can, this will inspire you to go take a look at what's on your phone and maybe, you know, certainly don't need everything. Uh, even though I have all those, I have some that I do daily and some that I go when I need to. But I will tell you, the other thing I do have on mine is I have Zillow and Realtor.com. Why? Because clients are using them. Sure. And then I want to be able to pull it up and see what Zillow might be saying or Realtor.com might be saying if it's not in my MLS area. And I'm in, you're always interested in real estate. So you might look at those two as well. Before we get to our closing and kind of chat for just a second, I want as we close the real estate uh, section of our podcast, I wanted to bring this up. I think we should bring this up um, every week. Okay. Use your damn CRM, people. <laughs> that is the truth. I feel like uh, that was so fun when we were talking about that. And I am telling you, man, that that's going to have to be my claim to fame. Use your damn CRM, folks. It's going to make your life easier. I, I always talk about a CRM, and I feel like people are tired of me talking about it. But if you did use your damn CRM, your life Actually, be you know what? Now that you say that, I'm going to start. I'm going to put quotes around that. And I'm gonna, that is going to be an official quote of Jan O'Brien. And I'm going to start using it in presentations when we build them. 
Use your damn CRM. I like it. I think that's a great idea. So, Jan O'Brien, anything going on this weekend? What are you, you doing anything fun? I don't know. I would hope to go. Hopefully, it might be raining, but if not, I uh, want to get out and go on a hike somewhere. That's my goal. Nice. How about you? Well, okay, so tomorrow we are going to Tommy Bahamas down in Newport Beach, the, uh, the restaurant down there. Last year, about February or March, before the shutdown, it was like right before COVID, Laura and I had gone down and we hadn't been in Tommy, Tommy Bahamas in years and we went down there and we had a Mai Tai. It was a freaking awesome Mai Tai. And we, we were less like, we loved it. So we thought, you know what? 2020, it's gonna be the summer of Mai Tais. Wah, wah. That did not happen last year because everything closed. Right. So starting tomorrow, we are going to tell me we have our rest. We may, I made my reservation for this weeks ago. We're going tomorrow afternoon. We're gonna sit out on the patio. It's supposed to be a nice day down at the beach. Have a couple mai tais, and we're gonna start mai tai summer 2021. All right. So you're making me think of a place when I was there in. Uh, at Realty One Group in, in um, where did I live? Somewhere in Orange Irvine. County. You Thank lived you. in Irvine. What's the place that had, what was that little cool beach place that was, that was, had those best Mai Tais? Yeah, those really are the absolute best what, Mai what, Tais. Billy's and now, it was, we just drove by it the other day. Is I mean, it Billy's? Weekend. Something with Billy's? Or... Yeah, Billy's on the beach. That's exactly Billy's it. Billy's on the beach. Thank you. As soon yep. as you said that, I had a vision of that because I think I even took my sister there. They are, those Billy. are the very, very, very All best right. Mai Tais. Well, you, that's awesome. Uh, have a Mai Tai on me then, please. We will. Okay. Anyway, that's it. All right, everyone. Be forever wandering, but not lost. And use your damn CRM. <laughs>